All right, this question comes from Martin Long. He asks, do you guys ever think about coaching at OU or at the high school level? Um, I think it's natural to, to think about it because whenever you can't play, you, you still, at least I still think about having some tie to the game and, um, it's not the same, but you still love the sport, love the intricacies and the details of it. So I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think about it, but the thing that is just so overwhelming is how much damn work it is. It is an absolute grind. Those guys, and I know they are handsomely rewarded. I know it, but it, it, it is, it is tough, man. It is tough, especially during the season you're talking about, I don't know, you work until you can't anymore. You go home, everyone else in the house is asleep. You lay down, you wake up, and you get up and go before anyone else is awake. That is the life of a coach during the season. And in the offseason, it's better than that, but it's not like it just stops. So that's the one thing that keeps me from, from really wanting to get passionate about it and chase it down. I, this is something that I don't think I know you, you and I would be great coaches. I know we would. I, I know that we would like, there's no doubt in my mind, but there is with, with what we do with TV and radio and You know, now the ability with with BB being back to, you know, go watch practice every once in a while, that scratches the itch enough Mm -hmm. for us. But if, I mean, coaching at that, like at the college level, it is, it is, it's consuming. And I think kind of with my situation in life, like, I, and everyone's in different situations, right? I just don't want to do it. I, I don't want to have to have that, that dominate my life. Yeah. And that's what coaching is like at that level. Now high school is different, right? Could I, could I be a volunteer high school coach, you know, show up for a couple hours? Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of fun. Right. And feel like you're making a difference for kids, but like I am, and you and I are wired the same way. Like when we do something, we're so all in. I can't, I can't, I, I can't be half in well, something like that. I could, I could do that, but I can't, I can't be around. I can't be around a loose environment where it's not like you know what i'm saying like i it's good if i'm going to do it i want it to be detailed i want it to be fast i want the players to be receptive it like i don't want i would not want to go waste my time to just go be out there and high five the guys and be like oh yeah why don't you uh yeah try and stay lower next time i I, i've got no interest in that like if if i was ever to do something like i would want it to be uh, like I would approach it as I like, is the same way I was coached. Now I may not uh, insult the player, but I would, I would, I would want to do it in and, and be very demanding, but that's like, it's so different now. Like, it, it's kind of hard to do that, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting. The other thing to think about with coaching is you're an Oklahoma fan. This is not what college football coaching is. It's usually three years, four years, and you're fired. Or your coordinator, whether you're offensive coach or defensive coach, is getting a job. And that job is in Ames, Iowa. 
Are you ready to move your family to Ames, Iowa to get to, to carry on that next gig, right? Because the new coordinator that's coming in is bringing his own linebacker coach or offensive line coach. Are you ready? Like, yeah, coach at Oklahoma for one of the best programs in the country? Yeah, let's go. Al Gundy's been there for, what, 23, 24 years? That is not college football. That is not the norm. Oklahoma is not the norm. I I made an agreement with my wife before we got married that I would not become a college football coach. And it was because of the experience we had together in the NFL. Yeah. We moved, what, I got cut eight times, nine times? And she was like, I'm not doing that again. Yep. She was like, if you, if you get into college coaching, because she understands the profession. Because she got to see it. Like, I played for a lot of different coaches. I was, I was at different spots. Coaches getting fired while I was there. Yep. And, and I know that the NFL and college aren't the exact same thing, but it, like, that's the profession. And yeah, if, if I get into coaching, it's a divorceable offense. We made that agreement. And yeah. I, I plan on sticking to that. Now, high school, maybe that'd be a little different, like volunteer coaching, but I'm with you. Like, I, I know how I would be if I did it. Like, we wouldn't be able to do this podcast, you know, like if right. I got into coaching. Like, you, there's only so much time in a day. And I would be, if I did it, I'd be all in. And I, you know, I, it's like my life's goal would be to get the kids better and to win games, like, and, you know, affect their lives and stuff like that. And I've thought about that. Like, if, if I got into coaching, like, I, I feel like I'd be really good at it, but you, life is all about making choices. And, you know, for us, like, it's just not us, you know, it's our wives, our kids, like there's, it's, you, you gotta, you gotta make the best decision for you. And I think as far as us not getting into coaching, we're kind of protecting ourselves from ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's like, you're, what you're explaining there is it's still kind of like the Oklahoma, it's like the crimson tint on things. Like, yeah, it would be awesome to, to go and watch players grow and get better and, help win games and, you know, be a part of a championship. But again, that's not college football. College football is coaching and stressing every hour of the day that you, the staff's going to be fired. And then what are you going to do? Like you got your, you got your one-year contract right now. Like defense didn't perform this year. We didn't do good. Like, are, are we going to get is the head guy going to cycle us out, bring in a new coordinator? We get fired. And can I get a job anywhere else? And, That's and we job, haven't, man. and we haven't talked about recruiting and the grind that that has become. We haven't talked about NIL and the grind that that has brought to college coaching. We haven't talked about making sure kids are going to class and tutors and not getting arrested and all that stuff. Like, being a college coach, like they deserve that money because to me, it sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, a lot, man. I, it, it's the number one reason I do not want to ever get into college coaching is I never want my job to depend on 18 to like 21 year old kids. No doubt about that. And, and what they're doing with their lives and how much they care. Like that is, I, I, I'm not that big of a control guy, but like, Oh, just thinking of being at the, the mercy of those guys. Like, Oh, that, that brings me a lot of anxiety. No, thanks, man. I'll, radio, some television. Uh, right. We'll keep this podcast rolling, man. We'll, uh, I, I am, we're flexible, right? We get to take vacations. I, no, I'm good. 
I'm good on the right. coaching thing. But, okay. but to the answer of the question, Martin, uh, do I ever think about it? Yeah, I think about it. All the and time. Then I, and then I remind myself of all the other things that come. Like, the glory of it is like, you know, being on the sideline and, you know, having a part and winning a championship. But, man, that is – the amount of work to get to that point is insane. It, it's a lot of work, and the YouTube – the YouTube uh, viewers will enjoy this. They give us rings for being part of the radio squad. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. we get the ring, baby. We get to feel like we did our part. Yeah. There's a, the old uh, 2020 big 12 championship ring right there. Nice. So, um, so yeah, we get enough fulfillment and our wives don't hate us or at least that much. We get to spend time with our sons. That's the thing for me is like, I love, my son's seven. He's playing baseball. Um, I'm you know, like kind of a coach there. And it, that's, it's so fun to go out there and be with him. And like that, that is, it, I know some, some, uh, some coaches do that too. And it's just way more difficult to pull it off and to be able to have that attention for your family. Yeah. And would it be really, really cool to, you know, make, $5 million a year coaching college football. Yeah, that'd be sweet, but there's more money, more problems. There, and I and still say that there's give and take, man. It. College coaches. It's like the only job where you make a ton of money and you can't spend it because like I said, if I made $5 million a year, I'd drive a fire red Ferrari everywhere that I went. But you can't do that whenever you're a college coach because there's like this, this stigma like, oh, he makes $10 million a year, but God, look at, look at him show it off, making money off those college kids. Like they can't spend it and you can't go anywhere. <laughs> you, know, you, it's, you can't, you have no free time. You can't right. do anything. What if I want to go act like an idiot? Okay. That's, that's one of the things that I'm holding on to. <laughs> yeah. I, what if I want to disappear for a couple of weeks? Right. Go off the grid. Like you can't. Oh. No, thanks. I think I think our ultimate uh just like, yeah, it'd be cool, but no thanks. Also, it, even though I think that you and I are pretty uh pretty savvy when it comes to football knowledge and had what a lot of people would view as very successful college football playing careers, like you don't just walk in and become a position coach either. Nope. You start at the ground level, work your way up. Oh, gross. Like, could you imagine Gundy being like, Gabe, get me coffee? <laughs> uh, just we could no be thanks. in there at, at 4 a.m. after a road trip, cutting up, uh, tagging coverages. Yeah. Kent State film. You know, be great. No, I am, I am good. 